So every time you turn on the TV, there's some pundit or Republican telling Democrats, you all need to move to the center. Don't run a real liberal for pro. What the f is this all about? Check it out and subscribe for more information. Share your thoughts with us in the comments section. You can't turn on a TV news channel these days, at least a cable TV news channel, without seeing some TV pundit. And in fact, this morning I saw the TV host, Stephanie Rule, going off on this whole thing about how Democrats need to move to the middle. What the hell does that mean? I mean, do they mean the Democrats should say it's just fine that 30 million Americans have no health, have no health insurance? Do they, do, we, do we love the big banks making, I think they just made $230 billion in profits, um, the, the best year they ever had, while ripping us off and putting our economy at risk? Is that, is that what move to the middle means, the status quo? Oh, things are just fine the way they are. Let's just make little tiny tweaks. Is that what they're talking about? I don't get it. I, you know, I, I, I listened to this conversation that, that, that Stephanie Rule was having with a Republican consultant who was saying, yes, the Democrats need to move to the middle. And, uh, a, and a genuine progressive, and I'm sorry his name is not coming to the top of my head right now, um, who was trying to push back, but he really didn't want to piss off the, the host, right? The, the first rule of being a panelist on TV is don't disagree too strongly with the host. And, and she kept saying, but, you know, if they moved to, you know, it's all about the, it's all about the, 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 the people who voted for Obama and then voted for Trump. Well, let me get back to that in just a minute. Um, does move to the middle mean that the fossil fuel and chemical industry should continue to poison us and our planet? I mean, is it just fine that the drug companies and for-profit colleges and charter schools are literally ripping us off to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars a year, transferring that money out of the pockets of working people, the middle class, retired people, young people, and into the pockets of, of uh, you know, billionaire CEOs? Is it just fine that the American dream is dead? That for the first time, literally in the history of the United States, a generation is not gonna do better than their parents? Is that, what, is that what these people mean when they say Democrats need to move to the middle? That there's no reason, there's no need to bring, you know, we don't need union jobs back? Is that what they say? Is that what they're talking about? Is Sherrod Brown's call for protectionist trade policies only doing it the right way through Congress instead of some stupid presidential proclamation and trying to negotiate with the president of China who's going to eat your lunch? Is that, is that too far out? for these guys? I mean, what the hell is the setter beyond the status quo? And if it's the status quo, who wants it? The logic that I, that I think I was getting from what I was seeing on television this morning, and I've been, and I've been hearing, uh, this was the first time I saw it you know, from one of the hosts, actually not the first time, I've heard Chuck Todd say the same thing, um, who's not you know, identified politically, right? He's supposed to be a real reporter. Um, and of course you hear it from you know, people, uh, people who are former Republicans or current Republicans, they're all telling Democrats, move to the middle, move to the middle. And like I said this morning, the argument was, well, what about those people who voted for Obama and then voted for Trump? Well, what was the signature call for action, essentially? What was the motto back in 2008 and then again in 2012? What was the motto of the Obama campaign? Change, hope and change. Change is radical. Change is not status quo. Now, tragically, Barack Obama was stuck with a Republican-controlled House and Senate for most of his presidency. Um, you know, I, I get it that for the first two years, the Democrats held the House, but, uh, or excuse me, held the Senate, but there was, um, and, 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 they, and they, actually, they did control the House for, for quite a bit of that time. But my point is that there were only 72 days there where they had a veto-proof Senate, and that's when they passed Obamacare. And, you know, about a dozen other pieces of really significant legislation. But when people voted for Obama, they weren't, that was, he was not the middle, in my opinion. They thought they were voting for a liberal. He was campaigning on, let's make universal health care. And that's what he tried to bring about with Obamacare. He was campaigning on, we're going to do something about these banksters. When he got in, he discovered, you know, essentially, I don't know if he couldn't do it or if he didn't think that he had the political capital or it wasn't, you know, in his in his, uh, you know, the fire in his belly or whatever, but, you know, he never did anything about the banks. Um, but 
It was about change. And I would say, I would, I would strongly argue, here, my pushback on this argument that I was hearing this morning uh, on MSNBC, that I hear all the time, actually, frankly, across you know, uh, political talk shows, and that the Republicans are really trying to push, because, in my opinion, because they know that if the Democratic candidate is same old, same old, if it's somebody from the new Democrat coalition, if it's a recycled Bill Clinton, basically, the Democrats will lose. Donald Trump will eat their lunch, our lunch, in my opinion, if we don't have somebody who has, who is either a solid, true progressive, which so far looks to me like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, or somebody who has embraced solid, true pro progressive positions and, and, and done so in an, in an intellectual uh, framework, in an understanding of what social democracy is and democratic socialism is. They may not like using that word, that phrase, and I get that, that's fine, I don't have a problem with that. If, you know, if, if that's gonna increase your chances of winning, do what you gotta do. But this whole move to the middle thing, this is just complete horse crap in my mind. I mean, I, I don't, and, and how anybody who wants the Democrats to win could be listening to the Republicans' advice on this. Blows my mind. And then on top of that, you got, you know, oh, well, what about that socialism word? We're scared to death of that. You know, 1988, George Herbert Walker Bush said of Michael Dukakis, quote, with the American tradition of entrepreneurship and free enterprise at the very moment when other government... You know, he said Dukakis broke with the American tradition of entrepreneurship and free enterprise at the very moment when other world governments are abandoning socialism. This, there's a, this great piece on Think Progress today, the 90-year history of Republicans calling Democrats socialists and thus telling Democrats, move to the middle, please. Paul Ryan, quote, Social Security right now is a collectivist system. Excuse me. Barry Goldwater was actually a, a pretty good friend of Lyndon Johnson. They were two of the most powerful men in the United States Senate. And that, that association kind of transcended their, their political differences. And he wrote a letter, excuse me, he wrote a letter to uh, Lyndon Johnson when, when uh, Jack Kennedy offered him the vice presidency saying, please do not join John Kennedy's socialist presidential ticket. Quote, I still have a numb feeling of despair over your actions of yesterday in accepting the candidacy for vice president. It's difficult to imagine a person like you. This is Goldwater writing to Johnson. Friends, it's difficult to imagine a person like you running in a second spot to a weaker man, but it is even more incredible to try to understand how you are going to try to embrace the socialist platform of your party. That was, 1980, that was 1960. 1960. 1960. John McCain in 2008, St. John. He says, uh, Obama wasn't just a socialist, he was also a liar. At least in Europe, said McCain, the socialist leaders who so admire my opponent are upfront about their objectives. So what, you know, what is this? I mean, what, what are we talking about? Ronald Reagan. This was back in 1967 when, when um, uh, LBJ was pushing through Medicare. And Ronald Reagan did this recording for the American Medical Association. All of us can see what happens once you establish the precedent that the government can determine a man's working place and his working methods, determine his employment. From here, it's a short, well, he starts out, the doctor begins to lose freedoms. You know, first you decide that the doctor can have so many patients. They're equally divided among the various doctors by the government, but then the doctors aren't equal. You know, he goes, through, and, and once you establish the president that the government can determine a man's working place, his working methods, determine his employment, from here it's a short, a short step to all the rest of socialism, to determining his pray, pay. And pretty soon your son won't decide when he's in school, where he will go or what he'll do for a living. He'll wait for the government to tell him where he'll work. One of these days, he said, if you do not stop Medicare, socialist Medicare, this is Ronald Reagan in 1967, if we do not stop socialist Medicare, one of these days you and I are going to spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in America when men were free. 
Newt Gingrich, when, when Bill Clinton pre presented Hillary Care, which was, you know, kind of a pretty decent plan. It was sort of a variation on, you know, uh, basically Obamacare. Newt Gingrich takes the floor of the House and says, Bill Clinton's health care plan is socialism, now or later. It's a plan to, quote, seize control of the health care system and centralize power in Washington. During Dwight Eisenhower's administration, See, these are all the examples of Republicans telling Democrats, move to the middle, stay away from that changey stuff, stay away from that socialism, oh my God. President Dwight Eisenhower's Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, Oveda Kolb Hobby, denounced the Democratic plan to provide free polio vaccines to children. Now, I remember this. I was, you know, in elementary school in the 1950s when, when uh, Dwight Eisenhower was president. And in school, we lined up and we took the sugar cube, and then later on, we lined up and we took a shot for polio. To, and, and it ended polio. It was free. And she said, this is a backdoor leading to socialized medicine. This was, this was Eisenhower's HEW secretary. In 19, go, going back before that, 1945, when Harry Truman proposed a single-payer health care system. Yes, President Harry Truman proposed the first national single-payer health care system. The American Medical Association said this is, quote, socialized medicine, and Truman's White House staffers are followers of the Moscow party line. They distributed 55 million pamphlets featuring a fabricated quote associated, uh, attributed to Vladimir Lenin saying, quote, socialized medicine is the keystone to the arch of the socialist state or the communist state. Before that, you had the American Liberty League. And now we've got, you know, Mike Pence telling CPAC last weekend, America will never be a socialist country. Mitch McConnell, America needs strong borders, not socialism. What do you think these people are talking about when they say the center? Can somebody please identify this for me? I don't, I don't get it. Does it mean that, that we're just supposed to go with Democratic politicians who take a lot of money from big corporations who, who, who are there because of pharma or, or you know, high tech or something?